Welcome to St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Seattle. We're glad that you're joining us for worship today. To more fully participate in the liturgy, you may download a bulletin from the link right below. You may follow the link below to donate to St. Stephen, and you may also follow that same link to donate to the local food banks in Seattle, or if you are near St. Stephen's, you can bring food and place it in the bins at our doors. Blessings to you this day. Worship will begin in a moment. Come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognize God's presence with us. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship God together. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, 
may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and my, for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. Paul's letter to the Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to grace given to us. Prophecy in pr proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassion in cheerfulness. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. He asked those disciples for their sense of what the word was on the street regarding his identity. Who do people say that the Son of Man is? Now to answer this question, all the disciples had to do was reply what other people had been saying. There's not a lot of controversy or risk involved when you speak using the third person. Well, some say you are John the Baptist, but others say you are Elijah, and still others speak of you as Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Even if these sorts of claims were the street talk, they didn't reveal very much. At best, they were mere snippets of information shared. So Jesus altered the question. Evidently, he wanted more than impressions from the people eating down the street at the coffee shop. So he changed one word, and now he repeated the question. Now the word you was inserted. Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am is a much harder question than we think it is. And it's already hard enough. But there's even more that Jesus is asking in this seemingly straightforward question. And perhaps it's this more that is the most challenging, the most demanding, the more we wish we could avoid. Because who do you say that I am is at the same time, who will you say that you are? That's the center of the difficulty of this question. If we only had to provide an answer to Jesus' question of his identity, that would be one thing. However, answering the question of Jesus' identity is also having to give voice to our own. Who you say Jesus is is who you have decided to be. You can't answer Jesus' inquiry without revealing who you are. Or we could switch it around. Who you are reveals who you have decided Jesus to be. Jesus' question is not a test. It's not about getting the answer right. It's the moment when you come face to face with your own commitment, your own discipleship, your own identity. It's the moment when you have to admit to what extent how you follow Jesus actually connects with some sort of confession of who you believe Jesus to be. Who do you say that I am is not just an issue of integrity or an evasion of hypocrisy. It's being willing to risk being known for what you believe. It's recognizing that your identity cannot be separated from your Christology. Peter has to answer the question for himself, as do every single one of Jesus' disciples, including we disciples. 
in the end, who do you say that I am is an invitation to meaningful Christological reflection, an invitation to conversation around our Christological commitments that is all too rare these days, an invitation to discussion around the correlation between who we are and who we need Jesus to be. Who do you say that I am is also a question we should ask of others and of ourselves. Who indeed will people say we are? Are we willing to ask the question or do we stay silent, afraid of what people might say, perhaps worried about what truth might get uttered? Jesus knows it's one of the hardest questions to ask, which is why he asks it in the first place and why he has to ask it first. Why follow this crucified Christ? Because only this crucified Messiah reveals God as a suffering, vulnerable God. Only those who stand behind the cross and watch him suffer and die will be convinced that at the heart of reality, is one who enters into suffering. As Dietrich Bonhoeffer reminds us, only the suffering God can help. Scripture bears witness to a God who hears the cries of the poor and defends the orphans, widows, and immigrants. The God of the Bible suffers with the people. God comes among us as a vulnerable baby born among the homeless, lives as an immigrant, associates with the outcasts, and compares the kingdom to receiving a little child. He is then executed as a criminal and buried in a borrowed tomb. The message is profound. Christ has moved into our vulnerability, our guilt, our alienation, our suffering, our death. God has claimed our weakness as a resource for divine power. God has claimed our wounds as the potential means of healing. We follow the crucified Christ as people of hope. We live on the other side of the cross from Peter. What Jesus hinted to Peter has happened, and the crucified one has become a risen one. And those who follow him know the future does not belong to the triumph of suffering, sin, and death. It belongs to the reign of Christ over all creation. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of freedom, we pray for our nation and all the nations of the world for peace, 
and unity across barriers of language, color, and creed for elected and appointed leaders, that they would serve the common good, inspire all people with courage to speak out against hatred, to actively resist evil, unite the human family in bonds of love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all the reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially for Annie, Kathy, Joy, Beth, Betsy, Heidi, Peggy, Caroline, Carol, Rita, Marshall, Marilyn, Larry, Tom, Jan, Lori, Karen, Barbara, Max, Nancy, Donna, Richard, Jackie, Gracie, Jean, Alice, Diane, Barbara, Patty, Bill Baker and his family, and Maeve. Touch them with your healing hand and bring them to know wholeness again in you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace, we pray for those who have died, especially the faithful in every generation who have worked for justice, for prophets who called us to racial reconciliation, for martyrs who died because of hatred, and for all the communion of saints. Make us faithful to your call to proclaim your good news by word and example, and bring us at last into the glorious company of the saints in light. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of light and life. You made us in your image, and you called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people in your words spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with our patron Stephen and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
After his resurrection, Jesus was known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord God, you hold both heaven and earth in a single piece. Let the design of your great love shine on our anger and sorrow. Give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our cities, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, who has called you, is faithful. Go into the world with joy, love extravagantly, forgive generously, live abundantly. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.